You guys want to want to watch me butterfly a chicken? Yeah, let's do that. Let's butterfly a chicken together. Um, I'm making iron skillet chicken today. It's one of my favorite dishes. Um, this is for this is for baby chickens. Um, but what I do is uh, I gotta clean this out. But this is my iron skillet, and what I do is I put it in the oven without the lid, and I I heat it up to 500 degrees. And then once it's 500 degrees, I put the chicken in it and set it back in the oven. And then I think I knock down the temperature a little bit. Maybe I don't. And I let it cook for like a half hour. And to make it work, you you gotta you have to have the chicken. You have to have the chicken laid flat in the pan so that the maximum amount of surface area or skin on the chicken is making contact with the pan. And what it does is, you know, it usually takes like an hour to bake a chicken, like a four or five pound chicken, but you can do it in a half hour by butterflying it and kind of like, you know, you're, you're cooking at 500 degrees, so it cooks a lot faster, uh, but it doesn't dry out because you're cooking it faster. And what you end up getting is just like a really golden, a golden and crispy skin and underneath just absolutely tender and moist chicken man it is fabulous so but you gotta uh, you, you have to prepare the chicken in a certain way so that it can lay it flat because you just put a chicken in there it's not gonna work right so let's let's do that I'm making that I'm making this tonight for uh, Laura and me when I do these uh, cooking videos I like to do hardly set up anything at all other than maybe uh, clean the counters a little bit uh, so that you can um, because I want to show you exactly like how this works from scratch so what I'm going to do I got a chicken here from uh, from Kroger and this guy is or gal I don't know which is I think it's about right at five pounds got a good deal on it uh, and usually a lot of my cooking planning depends on whether I get a good deal or not. So if I go and I see that ribs are on sale, well, we're going to make some ribs. Uh, uh, I saw that chicken was on sale, so I figured, uh, actually I bought this a few weeks ago. So let's get this, uh, let's see, how do we do this where you can witness it? All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn you over. All right, this is all being shot off my my um, laptop here. So let's first get this chicken out and use this dish just to kind of contain it a little bit. By the way, if you're drinking, uh, which I am not until later tonight, I usually only allow myself to <clears throat> partake uh, a little juice of the corn on typically Fridays, Saturdays and uh, Wednesday nights. So I'm going to get this chicken out of its uh, out of its bag and rinse it off here. I'll take the giblets out. We'll hold on to these till later. And I still have the giblets from the last chicken I did, but eventually I'm going to get around to maybe making a gravy or something with them. I'm going to rinse it off bit all right bring this so if you're drinking by the way uh here's a little here's the game every time you see me wash my hands take a drink i know i have a tough time setting my water heater like it, it wasn't heating water correctly so i had to go in there and I had to adjust the uh the temperature and now it comes out scalding hot uh unless i have it absolutely set like at a i don't you know, halfway or less. Otherwise, I'm just going to burn my the skin off my hands. So I'm trying to figure out how to do that in a way that makes sense. Okay, so let's take a look at our chicken. There she is. Can't really see the screen. When, yeah, okay, that's good. Uh, we'll start off with, uh, let's pat this down. How's everybody doing today? What are you guys cooking? Uh, I love to cook. I mean, cooking is... My dad's the same way. In fact, I talked to him today, and uh, those of you who have been uh, concerned about him, he's doing great. He's, he's fine. He's got no problems right now. Uh, he golfed 18 holes 
which just sounds exhausting to me. I'm so glad of uh, of all the obsessions. One of the obsessions I did not get that seems to afflict a lot of men is golfing. I got nothing against it, man. If you're a golfer, man, go crazy. You know, love it. But, uh, yeah, I just, just never really got into it. And I'm glad because, uh, you know, like these guys, you know, they're like, yeah, I'll try golfing. And then, like, um, they go golfing and then, like, $10,000 later, they bought the most ninja clubs possible. And, all right, I'm just getting some of this junk off, man. Uh, these are kitchen shears. These are really good for cutting meat. Like, you know, we don't need all that. And, I mean, I do like fat because fat is what gives it its flavor. But I know that Laura uh, doesn't like it. So it's... And I want her to be happy about what she's eating. So I'm always looking to make sure she's comfortable with it. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to remove the, uh, what is this? We're going to remove the spine. And uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to cut along either side of it. And that way we can open this bird up. So, uh, so I'm just going to, just like you're cutting a piece of construction paper when you're a kid, man. These, oh, man, these are great. I think Laura got them for me for uh, Christmas for my birthday. And uh, you just cut right along this spine here. It should just come right out. Look at that. I am so sorry if you're squeamish and you're not uh, really into watching people <laughs> doing butchering. <laughs> but you know, you gotta eat. And uh, there we go, we open it up there and then I think uh, let's see here. There's the breastbone. So what we're going to do, once again, if you're drinking at home, washing my hands, take a drink. I'm going to get the knife out. I need to get a, a real sharpener. So this sharpener really does not do the job. Put a notch right here, right in the crooks of it. There we go. And uh, then we're going to put some slits here. Kind of allow that. Put one down the middle and one on each side. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out. See, I open that. I'll pull out this breastbone here. We don't need it. Here we go. Of course, it's never easy when I'm on camera, all right? Um, watch me cut my finger open on live Facebook. <laughs> what do you guys... Call the call the ambulance for me. I'm lying on the ground, bleeding to death. There we go. There's the breastbone. We'll take that right out in the cartilage. Boom! Look at that. And now we have a full chicken here that we can um, uh, lay down on the cutting board, and we can uh, do some things to it. Uh, they say some people say to tuck the wings underneath. No, that's really important. Uh, so what's going to happen is, now look what I've done. See how now this chicken can lie flat? And so when we cook this in the oven, that skillet's going to be 500 degrees. And so when I put this in there, it's going to lie flat right on top of it. And all this surface area here is going to get cooked. But what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, dress it. I'm gonna. Um, the most important thing to me is just getting salt on it because that salt will help tenderize the meat. It we'll starts soaking into the meat. It, it helps keep it. Uh, helps it retain its moisture while it's cooking. But I'm also gonna put some spices on it. What spices? Well, I've learned. You know, when I was a kid, uh, I used to make steaks. You know, my mom would buy me steaks, and I'd make myself. A, I mean, just cheap steaks, probably. Um, but my uh, I would take a steak and I would just open up the, um, I would open up the, the spice rack or whatever, the, the spice cabinet and just put like every spice that was in there on the steak. And, uh, I mean, you probably couldn't even taste that it was beef because I had everything on it. Uh, I'm different now. I'm, I'm kind of a minimalist. If you notice, uh, in the way I write, in the way I... Uh, I play uh, the fiddle uh, in all things. I try to do like uh, just enough. Everything is just enough. I, I And I really believe in that because I, I don't like things that I feel like are overdone. You know, like there are some people who, you know, and I'm not knocking it, but there are some people who think that creativity 
is turning all the knobs up to 11 and and, and, and covering everything uh, with sprinkles. And yeah, I guess there's a certain, there is a certain, uh, what was the word I'm looking for? There's a certain um, aesthetic to that. But I like to be very simple. So there's only uh, there's only a few things that we're going to put on this chicken. We're going to put salt, pepper, garlic, and I'm only going to put one spice outside of that. And that is going to be rosemary. And I'm a big fan of rosemary, man. Like, you can do a lot of things with it. It's great. It's great on bread. Uh, but I, I feel like anything, anything that's kind of like, Oh, kind of home, homey like cooking, like like cooking roast and chickens and things like that. It's just such a, it just has such a great feel to it, and really gives it some depth, I guess. All right, so we're gonna take the chicken, and we're gonna put it in here. Um, I'm not cooking. This is just a place for it to sit until I'm ready to cook. move this uh, board away. Take a drink, everybody. I'm washing my hands. I got precious uh, cargo eating my uh, meals. I got Laura coming over tonight. Don't want anything. Uh, don't want her to eat anything untoward. Just poured some uh, olive oil on there. Rub that in there really good. God, olive oil is great. I mean, I buy, buy the big jar, the extra version. Good for marinades and all right. Let's just let's start with the salt. That's the most important. This is kosher salt. It's uh it's not as um not as strong as like the regular iodine. Uh, the crystals are bigger and it's just it's just great for doing that. So we put some kosher salt here. Got some pepper. Pepper is great. Mm -hmm. I think I tell the story every time I talk about the pepper. The uh, um when the vandals I think the vandals took Rome. Part of the homage that the Romans had to pay them to get them to leave was, I think, 20,000 tons of black pepper. Uh, all right, so here's uh, garlic, which is excellent. Garlic is great. And garlic, salt, and pepper, basically, and everything. And, and then this, because we're kind of going to this folky countryside flavor. Look, I love the smell of rosemary. Put rosemary on there. And then I'm going to flip this over. And we'll do the same on, on the back side, too. Oh, this is going to be so good. I am really excited about this. So uh, everything's fine with me. I'm working on Chapter 8 of my current novel, which is called Blood for Blood at Nashville. Uh, I really think this, this novel is going to rock, man. Like, uh, if you liked, if you liked um, Rampage on the River and you love The Perils of Perryville, which are two books I'm just absolutely uh, very proud of. Um, surprised that I was actually able to write them. <laughs> uh, this new book here, Blood for Blood uh, at Nashville, is going to be epic, man. I'm like, I'm in um, chapter chapter eight. And uh, already, I mean, this is going to, I think it's going to be, it's at least a two-parter. It might be a three-parter. I might, if it's three parts, I'm going to call it three acts. Um, but I... I'm working on the Battle of Oklahoma, and I won't say much more than that because I don't want to give too many things away. But uh, and, and I'll tell you this too: I don't want the novel to dwindle or spend a lot of time on unnecessary stuff. Everything I write is important to the plot, everything. And so, but there's just a lot going on because we're building. Uh, you know, I'm a plotter, and so we're building to a point. Um, and basically, this the book is going to be. Uh, it's a it's a revenge story, uh, but we're building the, the initial reason for the uh, revenge in the first part of the book. Uh, but it's a big story, and it's based off of uh, true uh, true historical events. It, it, and and then actually, actually, other than my fictional characters, the the events in the book are all real. The Battle of Chickamauga, uh, the Battle of Thompson Station. Oklahoma, which I'm about to write, and uh, th there's going to be Battle of Franklin, the Battle of, uh, it's, and it's going to end at the Battle of Nashville. So, so anyway, what I'm doing here now is I've I've cut the chicken, I have 
Uh, rubbed it down with olive oil because you know what? I love oil. <laughs> I rubbed it down with olive oil. Hey, hey, Virginia. I, love, I rubbed it down with olive oil and then I uh, – and then spices, salt, pepper, garlic, black pepper, rosemary. And now I'm just going to put it away and we're going to eat this at uh, – we'll uh, probably eat around 7 or 8 o'clock. Where Lord comes over usually around five, we uh, we go for a a, a nice hour long walk uh, to stay in shape, and then we take showers, we put on some jazz, and uh, we we have a few drinks. Laura's a beer drinker. I, I drink whiskey, and uh, and then I make dinner. And uh, and so for dinner, what I'm doing is uh, I don't want to show this, but this is a I'm making another loaf of bread. I'm not allowed to eat carbs during the week, so I, I get the carb up on the weekend. Carb loading. But I don't want to overdo it, so I didn't want to make like a starch. Uh, what I'm trying to say is I was only going to allow one thing, so I could have made like you know, fries, mashed potatoes, rice, whatever. And I decided, well, you know what I really like? Instead of all that, I just like really good bread. And I make... Just gonna go ahead and say, man, I make fantastic. I make better bread than than I can buy. That's the truth. So I'm making a really nice bread and roasted chicken and a salad for for our, our vegetables. You know, the salad's gonna have uh, it's just gonna be leaf and iceberg lettuce and and tomato. I got a nice Roman tomato. Look at that baby. Look at that mm. Roman tomato, and then I got, I got a nice. Uh, I could make my own dressing, but I think I bought I bought some Italian dressing with uh, northern Italian dressing with Romano cheese in it. That looks really good. Um, so so uh, that's what we're having for dinner. I don't know if I'll stream any of that live, but I did want to show you how to how to prepare or how to butterfly cut a chicken. Um, so anyway, about the book, I'm thinking about going to Oklahoma, Mississippi on Monday. It's about a four hour drive. Uh, if I do, I'll, I'll do stories all day long like I do when I uh, do my research trips. I like to, um, as you know, I write historical novels. And even though my inner story is fictional, the overall outer story is true. And so it's very important to me when I describe the battles that I'm very accurate about what happened and what it was like. And so it's going to the places where they happened makes that a lot easier. Like I, like the, the first one that I, I did that was like, that was Fort Donaldson. And if you remember from rampage on the river, that battle Fort Donaldson with the big ironclads coming up the river and the rebels firing, uh, you know, plunging fire down on them as they as they came up the river uh, it, and what it must have been like to stand on those ramparts. Well, what's great is Fort Donaldson. They've actually recreated that. I don't think that's the original fort, but they kind of rebuilt it uh, so that you can stand there and you can be like, wow, this is, that's the bend in the river where they would have come from. And this is where you would have been standing. They got replica cannons. Uh, and so it was really neat. And it really helped me visualize it and, and to write. Uh, recently, Laura and I went to Chickamauga and I had already written the Battle of Chickamauga. Actually, it, the Battle of Chickamauga takes up two chapters, uh, and it flips sides. So the first chapter about Chickamauga is all on the uh, the Union side, and then we flip over to the second chapter about it, and it finishes up with the uh, with the Confederates. But I did a good job looking at maps and and reading firsthand accounts and studying it. But then I, uh, but we went. And I wasn't far off, but I definitely needed to come back and make changes, and I did, and now it's even better. So I'm hoping to do that with Oklahoma. We'll see. I got some things happening that might keep me here in Nashville uh, during the week, but we'll see. I, I might make a uh, and, and just do it real, real grill like, you know, like maybe even sleep in my car. <laughs> Because a four-hour drive out there, so if I get up early in the morning, hit the road, uh, yeah, I could probably get out there by mid-morning, spend maybe four hours drive back. Yeah, I think I could do that. But anyway, that's how the butterfly chicken, and that's the update uh, for things uh, going on. I'm really excited. I am preparing to play the fiddle for a good friend of mine at her wedding in July. All my gigs have died. I had all sorts of gigs uh, planned out that were booked 
All of them died because of the uh, pandemic. This is the first thing I asked my band and I have at least one Don, Don Masters, my guitar player said that, yeah, he, he wants to do uh, that wedding. And I also have another wedding in, in September. I like doing weddings. They're fun. Uh, and the food's pretty good. Uh, and, uh, and sometimes after you get done playing, uh, you can, you can still get a drink. So anyway, that's, uh, that's the report today from Engdahl house. And I hope everybody's having a great Saturday and I'll leave this video up. So if anybody ever wants to know how to butterfly chicken, bam, just come to me, man. I, I got it on my, uh, <laughs> I got it on my Facebook page. All right. Have a great weekend and, uh, take care everybody.